Okay, thank you, Joanne. Well, this is going to be a whistle stop tour of the Yearling Cat Project. And um, I would just like to point out at the start, it was a five year project. So we know that congenital anomalies are a leading cause of mortality and morbidity in children. There's a network of population-based congenital anomaly registries in Europe called Eurocat, and these registries conduct surveillance in children with congenital anomalies, mostly up to one year of age. And I'd just like to point out that actually Eurocat includes registries in England, Scotland, and Wales. There is little information on the long-term survival and morbidity outcomes in the literature, but the availability of routinely collected administrative data may bridge this gap in knowledge. However, the accuracy of hospital discharge data needs to be assessed if these data are going to be used for surveillance. So the overall aim of the Eurolink Health Project was to establish a linked European cohort of children with congenital anomalies in order to evaluate the mortality and morbidity outcomes of these children up to the age of 10 years. So initially, 22 Eurocat registries planned to participate in the study, but three didn't get ethical approval in time, so they weren't able to participate. The length of time to get ethical approval varied considerably across Europe. And indeed, the three English registries took three years to get approval for the study and the data sharing agreements in place. We included all live-born children with congenital anomalies born between 1995 and 2014. We also included children without congenital anomalies, which we called reference children. And these children were came from the same population and from the same time period as the registry, as the population covered by the registry. Children were followed up to their 10th birthday or to the end of December 2015, so that it, we had at least one year follow-up information for all children. This is the map that shows the, Euralink, the registries that were involved in the Euralink Cat Project. As you can imagine, there are diverse languages, healthcare systems, and coding classification systems in use throughout Europe. So we worked very closely with the registry leaders and their teams as they understand the healthcare systems in their own countries. So how did we create this European cohort? Well, firstly, as I mentioned earlier, registries apply for the ethical approval to link to the administrative data. The EuroCAT data are already standardized, but the data in the healthcare administrative databases are not. So we created common data models to standardize the administrative data across Europe. We standardized the mortality data, the hospital discharge data, and the prescription data. And then we created a linked standardized data set on the cohort of children with congenital anomalies and reference children. So the linked, you can see my question, the linked standardized data stayed at the local registry level. And we produced central analysis scripts, which were sent to each of the registries to run and produced the aggregate table and results. And then the aggregate data and results were then to sent to the research team to do a meta-analysis. The linkage methods are a deterministic linkage, whereby we use a unique personal ID number to link to different databases. Some registries use probabilistic linkage, where it's a combination of variables, such as the date of birth and the gender, either postcode and maternal date of birth. Some registries use a combination of both deterministic and probabilistic methods, and some registries use manual linkage, which we wouldn't re recommend. So for example, seven of the registries use deterministic linkage only. Two registries use probabilistic linkage only. Six registries, which included the English registries and the Welsh registry, used a combination of deterministic and probabilistic methods, and three registries use manual linkage only. So to go to the survival study and results, in the survival study, we only included, we only included children with congenital anomalies. 
11 registries linked to congenital anomaly data to the National Vital Statistics, and were able to successfully link 96.5% of children with congenital anomalies. Seven registries linked congenital anomaly data to the death records only, so it isn't possible to assess linkage size. So of the 18 registries that participated in the survival studies, one was excluded as less than 85% of children had identifiers to allow linkage to occur. And one was unable to complete the study as they were, it's the study took place over COVID and they had to do COVID research only. So in this table, I just want to highlight a few results. And that's to say that we had over 175,000 children with congenital anomalies. And of these, about 9,000 died in our study period. So this large cohort enabled us to assess the mortality outcomes for a range of congenital anomalies. Moving on to morbidity, we excluded the hospital admissions due to obstetric stays, as in these instances, it is the mother who was admitted to hospital to give birth. Reference children were available in the study and five registries included the whole population. The Tuscany and the Northern Netherlands registries included a 10% and 20% random sample of the population, which were matched by date of birth and sex. Croatia and the three English registries weren't able to include um, reference children. And as we can see, the linkage success was very high. It was 96.8% for children with congenital anomalies and 95.2% for reference children. Again, in this table, I just want to focus on overall table, overall numbers. Um, we had over 99,000 children with congenital anomalies and with over 2 million reference children. So when we compared the linked versus the characteristics of the linked versus non-linked children, we found that um, children born preterm were less likely to be linked. And children with congenital anomalies born to teenage mothers were also less likely to be linked. And reference children born to older mothers were less link likely to be linked. When we looked at the prescription data, we looked at prescriptions for antibiotics and for chronic medications such as um, anti-asthmatics, insulin, anti-seizure medications, and cardiac medications. The start year for this study then was from 2000 to 2004. And again, we collected uh, we collected data on, up onto the end of December 2015, so that all children had at least one year follow-up information. Seven registries were included. And again, we had about 95% um, linkage success for children with congenital anomalies and reference children. And in the final cohort, we had over 60,000 children with congenital anomalies and 1.7 million reference children. So when we looked at the accuracy of the hospital data for ascertaining congenital anomalies, 11 registries participated in the study, which included all live-born children born between 2010 and 2014, recorded in the EuroCAT registries. The EuroCAT data were considered to be the gold standard in the studies, as registries used multiple sources of ascertainment for identifying children with congenital anomalies. In the hospital databases, we identified children with any ICD-9, CM, or ICD-10 code for congenital anomaly in the first year of life. And we compared the codes in the hospital database to codes recorded in the registry for 17 specific congenital anomalies. And we calculated the sensitivity and positive predictive value for each anomaly and pooled the estimates together. Our main findings were that the European hospital databases accurately record a limited number of anomalies in live-born children, such as the cleft lip with and without palate, gastroschisis and Down syndrome. And as we know, these anomalies are highly visible at birth. And gentle anomalies that do not require hospitalisation or surgery are underreported in the hospital discharge databases. And we also found that pregnancies relating in termination for fetal anomaly 
are often missing in hospital databases. This is highly relevant for anomalies with a high termination rate. So our conclusions to the accuracy study are that hospital databases can be an additional ascertainment source for congenital anomaly registries, but they cannot replace the congenital anomaly registries. So when we look at the strengths and limitations of our cohort, well, this is a population-based European cohort, and we have data on over 100 specific types of specific congenital anomalies. The common data models for standardizing the data are publicly available and can be used in other populations, as the variables in the healthcare databases are the same, regardless of the population studied. The limitations of the cohort are that only aggregate table and results are available, i.e. the linked individual case data remains at local registry level. We also found some bias in the not linked children, specifically that children born preterm and those born to teenage mothers or older mothers were less linked, likely to be linked. And finally, only three of the registries had data from 1995, so that meant we were unable to follow up children to 10 years of age with the other registries. So our recommendations are that a permanent unique ID number should be signed to each baby at birth to enable accurate linkage to administrative healthcare databases. We need to develop systems for classifying and reporting anomalies diagnosed in fetuses who undergo a termination. And we should also implement algorithms to discriminate between major congenital anomalies and suspected or minor anomalies in the healthcare databases. So to conclude, linking to administrative data allowed us to create a large European cohort of children to estimate the long-term survival and morbidity outcomes. In our survival co cohort, we had over 175,000 children with congenital anomalies. In our morbidity cohort, we had over 100,000 children with congenital anomalies and over 2 million reference children. In the prescriptions cohort, we had over 61,000 children with congenital anomalies and 1.7 million reference children. Hospital databases can be an additional ascertainment source for congenital anomaly registries, but the registries are still the most appropriate data source for surveillance of congenital anomalies. Thank you. And I've just included some of the publications that um, this presentation was based on in the presentation.